Hi, my name is Gene Schrader, and this is a course on bare metal embedded software development using the STM32. This course consists of about 25 lessons. My goal in this course is to help you become a successful, well-rounded, embedded system software developer. The course is based on my experiences in embedded systems, which started a long time ago in 1981. I hope it'll be useful. The style is casual, and I have my face on this first slide only just to show you who I am. Otherwise, I want to reserve the entire frame for content. Now, this course is not a cookbook course on how to quickly get code running on an evaluation board or a course that goes into great detail on the different hardware options with an STM32 MCU. Instead, the scope is broader, including both theory and practice. So the course has two parts. The first part is a mixture of some theory of operation of embedded systems, including the building of software, intermixed with getting a development environment set up and working and running code. This is in preparation for a course project. Much of the theory of operation should apply to most kinds of bare metal hardware and software. For example, MCUs from different manufacturers. But most everything with the project is specific to a particular STM32 MCU and the STM32 Cube IDE. I'll admit that some of the theory of operation lessons might not be so exciting, but they really can help you in becoming a better developer. And by going back and forth between theory of operation and practical stuff, I hope it keeps you interested. In the second part of the course, we study a simple software architecture commonly used for bare metal. Using this architecture, I wrote a base layer of software specifically for this course. We'll study the design and use of this software and see how it can be viewed as the start of a primitive operating system. And the second part of the course is important in my view. Good software design is important with embedded, even bare metal, just as much as it is with Linux and, um, and mobile apps. In this course, I dive into details now and again, but there are so many important topics that I didn't have time to cover. So I just tried to choose topics that would provide the broadest foundation. By the way, the pictures in the bottom of this slide are of an image of a 6502 microprocessor and a development board for the 6502. This is exactly the hardware I used in an introduction to microprocessors class at Ohio State, probably in 1979 or 1980. Those were the early days of small embedded systems, and it was an exciting time. Now I'd like to go through some prerequisites and tools and hardware that I use in this course. So for prerequisites, one is basic knowledge of the C language. C is still very important uh, in embedded. I would call it the base language of embedded, even though C++ is also quite popular. C is also the language of the Linux kernel, and I have often seen embedded developers who also work in the Linux kernel. This is a great combination of skills, and it's been very good for me personally. If you don't know C, I think you can sort of learn it in parallel with this course. Of course, there are a lot of C resources on the web to help you learn it. In the second half of this course, we look at a lot of C code. I suggest that people new to C read that code line by line and try to fully understand it. I realize it is more fun to write code than to read someone else's code. But in the real world, you probably do more reading of code than writing it. So it is a necessary and beneficial skill. The other prerequisite is to have a basic knowledge of computer concepts. In other words, the idea that there is this thing called a CPU that executes instructions, the idea of memory and memory addresses. It will also be useful to understand hexadecimal numbers, which are widely used in, in embedded. You don't need to know a lot, and again, perhaps you can learn it as you go. But if there's something in a lesson you don't understand, pause the lesson and Google it. I don't expect you to have 
uh, knowledge of hardware and electronics. Of course, any background will be helpful, but not critical. This course leans more towards software. Now in this course, I use the STM32 uh, Nucleo board, which is an evaluation board for an MCU. Um, there are many variations of this board, and I'm using the Nucleo F401RE. I think similar STM32 Nucleo boards could be used without having to do things much differently, but I haven't tried it. When I get a chance, I would like to try some other boards. For the IDE, I use the STM32 Cube IDE. This is the IDE provided for free by ST Microelectronics. It's based on the well-known Eclipse IDE. In my view, using IDEs provided by the manufacturer is the fastest and most practical way to get started. In recent times, it is what I have used in my job uh, during the startup phases of a brand new project. However, I'm not that enthusiastic about IDEs and tend to not use them once the project gets past startup. You'll need a, uh, some terminal emulator software uh, like PuTTY to talk to the board and on using the console. Um, there are other programs besides PuTTY. That's a fairly popular one. And finally, I do use a GSM hardware module in this course just as something to interfa interface to, but it's not necessar necessary to have one to take the course. Um, now, by the way, these pictures on the right, uh, this is an STM32, um, the image of the die, and this is the a STM32 nucleo board, um, like the one uh, I'm using in this course. Now for some final notes about this course. First, here are two GitHub repos. The first repo just contains a collection of documents I used in the course. Normally you should get these documents directly from the source, like ST Microelectronics or ARM. Now the README uh, file in the repo indicates the source of each file. I made a copy of these documents, so I would always have the exact version I used in the lessons. The other repo is the course uh, project code. As part of the course, we study this code and we integrate it uh, into the IDE. We build it and run it on the board. I'll also note that I use Windows 10 as my development machine. But the tools used, like the IDE, are meant to run on other platforms like Linux or, I think, Mac OS. Now, if you try this course, I will be interested to hear what you think. So please use any of the normal uh, YouTube communication methods. Now, these pictures on the bottom are of an image of an 8085 processor and the 8085 uh, user manual, I think this was, I looked and this was published in 1979. On my very first job, I was assigned to a small project that had an 8085 on it. After doing a little bit of the remaining hardware design, I was asked if I wanted to work on the software. Well, I had taken that course at Ohio State and liked it, so I said sure. And I remember this book very, very well. This was the start of close to 40 years in embedded software for me. Well, the first real lesson in this course is about MCU architecture, and it is coming up. Thanks for watching, and if you decide to take this course, good luck.